We're in Algebra 1, Lesson 9. We're in our new Unit 9-1. Today is January 28th. Please put the date. Did I update the date? I did. Whew. No extra credit there. All right. Make sure your name and date are on your notes. Today we're talking about systems of equations in general and how to solve them with graphing. So let's start out with some vocabulary. When I say system, what do I mean by that? Does anyone want to take a guess for their participation card or should I just go ahead? Yeah, go ahead, Andres. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is the form of a linear equation. Let's come back over here. So you still get XP and your card can come in. But that's not exactly what I'm looking for. It is an attempt. Anyone else want to give an attempt, Gunner? No? Okay. So when I say system, I mean more than one. That's it. So... Let's look at a system of fruit. Well, I need more than one fruit. I need a, a grape and I need an apple. In terms of equations, that means I have two different equations or three equations or four equations. For the sake of this unit, I'm going to be talking about two equations. So it's going to be a system because it's more than one. So far, so good. It's just a fancy way of saying more than one. We have more than one equation. So when I say system of equations, we're talking about two equations. Linear. This is an easy one. We just talked about linear stuff. Our last like three units. What does linear mean? What type of shape of a graph are we talking about? What are the rules of linear functions? Yeah, Gunner again? Line. Line. There it is. Everyone write it down. It's a line. Thank you, Gunner. You can turn in your card if you haven't done so already. Linear. I'm talking about a line. That means every time I move one in the x direction, I'm moving a constant amount in the y direction. The slope doesn't change. Uh, line, and it has slope. Has slope. If we talk about things that are curvy, like this graph, or this graph, or this graph, those do not have slopes because they are not lines. Slope is only with linear functions. All right, so solution. This is something a little bit different from what we know. Um, can anyone define what a solution meant in terms of a graphical representation? Say I had um, this line. What does a solution mean in terms of a graph? Yeah, Fernando. Uh, two points. Uh, you're close. I'll give you the correctness because technically both of those are solutions. Two points. I'm guessing you meant to say on on the line. Yeah. Yeah. So a solution is any point on this line. You don't need to write this down. This is just you listening. Any point on this line is a solution. But here's the thing. If I have more than one line, let's say I have two lines that look like that, there is only well there could be one solution. There could be no solutions, and there could be an infinite solutions. Generally speaking, I would say if you had to randomly put two lines on a piece of paper, 99.99% of the time, you are going to have one solution. That one solution is where those lines intersect. It's the solution where it satisfies both equations. We're going to be talking about that with example one, but this is what I do want you to write down. The solution is where... Both lines intersect. Where do they cross each other? If you don't like the word intersect, you can use the word cross. But where do they cross? There's only one spot that that happens. I need the x coordinate and the y coordinate. That's what we're doing today. And you can think about this. This is super valuable in terms of how it applies to the real life. So I always think, whenever I do systems of equations, I'm always thinking about World War II. World War II, you fire off a missile and you need to be able to intercept that missile by shooting it down with another missile. If you shoot down that other missile, then it goes down. Where does that happen? Where do these two things intersect? It's super, super valuable. Unfortunately, that deals with curves, but for now we're gonna be dealing with lines as a building block to start doing curves, yeah. No? Okay. So let's look at example one. I just want to know what it means to be a solution. We have two different uh, homework assignments. One homework assignment looks like these first two examples. The next two, or the next homework assignment looks like example three and example four. So two homework assignments, let's look at the first one. For example one, I have these two equations. I need to know if two comma three is a solution to those equations. All right, quiet raise hand. Which of these is the x? Which of them is the y? For two, three, which of them is the x? Which of them is the y? I want to see a ton of hands here. Ton of hands. Julian. Two is x and three is y. Yeah, label it. That's your x. That's your y. Julian, you can turn in your card. 
That's my x, that's my y. So I'm going to sub them into both of these equations and see if they work. All right, so someone help me substitute 2 and 3 in for my first equation. Someone read me what to do. Jessica. Um, multiply 3 times 2. 3 times 2. Minus 2 times 3. And what's the other side? What's the rest of the equation? Equals zero. All right, Jessica, can you do that for me? Um, six minus zero. Does six minus six indeed equal zero? Yeah. All right, so we can say zero does indeed equal zero. Give it a giant check mark. Yes, that did work. Thank you, Jessica. You can turn in your card. All right, I need another volunteer. Help me out with my next equation. People are still writing. Still writing. Go for it, Sergio. Two times two, minus, no, plus, five, times three, equals 15. All right, go ahead and multiply two times two for me, Sergio. Four, Four plus 15, equals 19. Does four plus 15 equal 19? Yeah. yeah, 19, you can say, we simplify that to 19 is equal to 19. Yes, check mark. If both of them have check marks, it satisfies both equations, then our answer here, and we're going to box it, yes. Yes, this solution is where those two lines intersect. If I were to graph them, they would graph and they would intersect at this point, 2, 3, and we're going to box it. And I need to change my, my box here. I need a red outline, no inside, yes. Any questions before we do the same type of example? I have a question, and then let's see if someone can answer it. If one of these is like 3 equal to 0, and one of them is 19 equals 19, one of them works and one of them doesn't, what would I say here? Quiet raise hand. If this one didn't work, but this one did work, what would I say for my answer? Yes or no? Yes, so with a, and it could be a maybe, I guess, maybe. Uh, quiet raise hand. Is it a yes or is it a no if one of these did not work? No. Quiet raise hand. If one of these did not work, would it be a yes or would it be a no? You get a 50-50 shot of making this. Is there a quiet raise hand? Fernando, did you already turn in your card? Edder, go for it. It would be no, yeah. It has to be both equations. Thank you, Edder. Edder, you can turn in your card if you'd like. All right, so next example. I'm not even going to tell you what to do. Someone tell me what to do. Example two, what am I doing with this possible solution? Is there a quiet raise hand that wants to tell me what to do? I only have seven cards out of a classroom of 12. That means there's five people out there that can participate. What am I going to do? What's my first step? Otherwise, I'm going to cold call on you. Someone that still has their card. I'm going to choose Jennifer, Jenny. Careful here. So this is the, I'll, I'll label this one for us. That's our X and that's our Y. Oh, seven. Two times 10. Good job. Continue on. Um, minus six times. Negative one, good, and thank you very much. Jenny, you can turn in your card. All right, who's going to help us with our multiplication and simplification on our left-hand side? Quiet raise hand, otherwise I'm going to cold call. And did I give, I did, okay. Jose, did you have your card turned in? No? Okay, go for it. 20? Negative 6. And then these are double negatives, so plus, they kiss, and then I'm going to get 26 on the left, 26 on the right. So is that good or bad? Good. We That is a solution to that equation. Now we have to check that it's a solution to the next equation. Thank you, Jose. You can turn in your card. 
All right, next up. What am I going to do? Don't make me cold call on you. You know that you're one of the last people. Yeah. Monty, go for it. Negative one plus two. I said it so fast, I couldn't keep up. Yep, there it is. Thank you, Monte. All right, who am I missing? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are two people left. Two people left. Who are they? Two people left. Josie and, and Cohen. All right. Who wants to do this one? You have to simplify the right hand side. Volunteer, otherwise, I'm going to call on one of you. All right, Josie, you're going to go for it. How do I multiply 4 and negative 1? So careful, it's a negative times a negative. All right, positive 4 plus 2, and then simplify this a little bit more. So I'm going to read the left-hand side. Go ahead and do it for me. Left-hand side is, I just want you to read the whole equation. Four plus two, six. Does that work, Josie? It does not work. So give it a giant X. It does not work. Ten does not equal six. And Cohen, our answer here is no. All right, both of you turn in your cards. All right, so that is one homework assignment. Let's get ready for our next homework assignment. There are two types of ways that they're going to have you graph. Both of them you've already seen. We've seen this form and this form. Everyone can participate multiple times. What is this thing called? What form is this? It's blah, blah, blah form. This one is blah, blah, blah form. What is the left one called? Jose? It is standard form. Everyone write it down. Standard form. Thank you, Jose. <coughs> What about the one on the right? What type of form is that called? Starts with an S. Two people know. Sergio. It is slope intercept. And again, if you forget this one, there's slope from M, the Y intercept, slope intercept form. Thank you, Sergio. All right, so what were the steps when I have standard form? Does anyone remember how to graph standard form? There are two steps, and then the third step I already gave you, which is to connect both of these points, point one, point two. Same thing with this one, so connect point one and point two. What do I have to do to get my points from standard form? Who remembers? Jose kind of remembers, Sergio kind of remembers, Andres kind of remembers, definitely remembers, maybe. We'll give it to Andres. <laughs> The X. 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 No, no. To get the X, you have the times times what? Zero. Yes, you have the correct words out. So I set Y equal to zero to multiply zero to B to get X. The, yeah. What are you really finding? The X coordinate. The X. X. Dot. Starts with an I. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Write it down. X intercept and in parentheses set Y is equal to zero. That'll give you one point because the Y coordinate is zero, the X coordinate will be whatever X is solved at. So that was good job remembering, Andres. Julian, good job remembering that it was the intercept. Julian, what do I do for the second point? You find the Y. Y intercept. And you do that by doing what? By setting X to 10? To zero. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right. That is how you graph standard form. We're going to be doing that in example three. Example four is going to be slope intercept form. How do I graph slope intercept form? Who can remember? What do you do first? Jose. B on the graph? What is the B called? Wait. It's one of these two. The y <laughs> Fernando. It, it is indeed the Y intercept. I'm going to give it to Jose. You yelled it out. You didn't raise your hand. You got to give him time. All right. So, and then Jose had this correct, which is you need to use the B. <laughs> the B is the Y intercept. So, thank you, Jose. If Fernando, you had raised your hand and then he called on you, I would have given it to you. All right. What do I do after I graph this y-intercept? Well, the only data I have left is using this. How do I use this to get my second point? What do I do? Ah, there's a quiet raised hand, Fernando. Yeah, what do I do? Find M. Well, usually it gives you M. It'll say M is 2. How do I use the fact that M is 2 to find the second point? And you basically have to restate what I just said back to you. <laughs> Use what to find the next point? Use or what it, what is it actually called? Yeah. So use slope for next point. Eh, we'll squish it in there. So if I start for my y-intercept, from my y-intercept, I use a slope to get to my next point. So I might go right one, up two, or whatever from my y-intercept. And then I'll have my two points, and then I connect them both to the line. Good review. Let's give Fernando his XP before we forget. I put him on the spot. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Example three. We need to graph both of these equations and find out where they intersect each other. That is the whole idea of a solution to a system of equation. Where do they cross? So let's look at this. We're going to find where these two lines cross by graphing them. How am I going to graph this standard form equation? Well, you have the steps now. What is my first step? There should be everyone raising their hands. I just gave you the steps. What is my first step for graphing standard form? Gunner. Okay, so we're going to find the x-intercept by, by setting... Which three? X, three X and three, three Y. What are we setting three <laughs> Y to? You said set three Y to. Call on someone else if you want some help. <laughs> zero. Zero. Yes. So this three Y is going to be set to zero, which means I'm going to be left with. 3x is equal to 9. I set the 3y equal to 0, it went away. I'm just left with 3x is equal to 9. That means my y-coordinate is 0. So I'll even set that up for us. My y-coordinate is 0. x comma y. How do I find my x-coordinate? Someone, quiet raise hand. Did I give Gunnar his xp? No, I did not. <laughs> Julian. <laughs> what do I do? To find x, this x coordinate, I'm missing it. How do I find that? Using this equation now. What do I do to both sides of this equation to solve for x, Julian? What do I do to both sides of this equation to solve for x? Divide by three. There, there it is. Divide both sides by three. Divide both sides by three. <laughs> x is therefore equal to what, Julian? <laughs> Nine divided by three is. Nine divided by three is. Three. Yep, x is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, therefore my x-intercept is 3 comma 0. Let's go ahead and graph that. It really helps to have a color here. And I just now realized that we should have gotten rulers. All right, uh, let's take a pause. Everyone go ahead and grab rulers. All right, now that we all have rulers, how do I find my y-intercept from this equation? My y-intercept. I just found my x-intercept. I need to find my y-intercept. Andres. You set this 3x to 0. And by doing that, I get this equation called what? Uh, negative 3y equals to 9. Equals to 9. So by setting x equal to 0, that means my x coordinate is 0. And I'm looking 
for this point right here. So thank you, Andres. Um, where is this? Andres. Boom. I need another person to solve this. Solve this equation. What am I going to do to both sides? Sergio. Divide by negative 3 both sides. Divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, and therefore x is equal to? Negative 3. Negative 3. X is, or sorry, I don't know why I have x. It should be y is equal to. <laughs> I cut it first. I should have let you catch it though. Y is equal to negative 3. Y is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to graph that point. Graph 0, negative 3. 0, I don't go in the x coordinate, I go down 3. 1, 2, 3, and I graph that. I have color, so I can keep my lines separate, but go ahead and make a line through those points. Make a line through those points. And don't forget, Monse, Arrow. your arrows. It goes on forever and ever in both directions. All right, we just graphed this equation. I did it in blue. So I'm going to say that was my blue equation. My next equation is going to be graphed in green. All right, so how am I going to graph this one? Oh, hey, it's also in standard form. How do we graph standard form? Andres already helped us last time. I want to call in someone new if possible. Jose. X-intercept. So how do I find the X-intercept? What do I set to what? Set Y to zero. So this Y is now set to zero. So I'm left with, Jose. Where x is equal to 12. Thank you, Jose. Once I have 4x equal to 12, I know that I set y equal to 0, so I'm going to have a 0 for my y coordinate. All right, so what do I do to both sides to solve 4x? Jessica. Divide both sides by 4 to get x is equal to? 3. 3. There's our 3. And I'm going to graph this on uh, my... My graph, which happens to be this same point. I'm just going to circle that point. That's one of my points. What a coincidence. Interesting. All right. Next point that I have to do, because I do have to continue graphing this, what is my next step? And did I give Jessica? I did not give Jessica her XP. What is my next step? There's only two people, three people raising their hand, four people, five people, six people, Fernando. Why did you do 3y equal to 12? What were you really setting equal to 0? Um, 4 times 0. Yeah, you're setting the x equal to 0 to find the y-intercept. If x is 0, I'm, the only information I have is my y, so my y-intercept. 3y is equal to 12. For now, just go ahead and solve this one for us. Um, 3 divided by 4 is 4. 4. y is equal to 4. And therefore, if I come back over here, comma, blank, the y coordinate is 4. I set x equal to 0, so that's my 0. I'm going to graph 0, comma, 4. 0 in the, this direction. I go up 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my point, and I also have this point, and I make a line that goes through those points. So let's see here. That is the wrong color, Mr. Sindel. There we go. <laughs> you guys love the teacher errors. I don't think that's going to be a teacher error. There is something that I'm... Not putting on here. What is it? Non Monse, she got it last time. Sergio? Arrows. Got to get the arrows on here. That is not teacher error. I knew that I was, this is a step that was next step. All right. And finally, I have graphed it. It said graph it, done. Now it's asking, what is the solution? Remember, the solution, as we defined up here, it's where both lines cross, where they both intersect. So, what is the solution? Where do they intersect? Cohen. Three, zero. At x equal 3, y equal to 0. You can also represent this. This is the same thing as 3 comma 0. You can represent it in both of these ways. On Khan Academy, it likes it in two different places. You can just represent it as a point of a solution. Either of these are fine. Thank you, Cohen. All right. We're almost there. We have one more example. Andres, what's up? Oh, what was it? It's not that. It's Monse's name. Monse's name? What should it be? It's M O N S. Oh, it's with a C. It's with a C, I think. Is it? Yeah. 
But thank you for always being on your toes. It keeps me on my toes too. Okay, so example four. Hey, now I don't have standard form. What is this form called again? Everyone shout it out. This is called? Um, slope, slope, slope intercept yeah, form. So let's go through the steps. What's my first step for graphing my first equation? I'm going to do my first equation in blue. What's my first step? Only two people know? Go back. Look at your table. What's my first step? Everyone should be raising their hands now. Look at your table. We just did this. My first step is two, only two hands, three hands. I'm going to wait for five hands. Four hands. I'm waiting for one more hand. One more hand. One more hand. What's my first step? What is your table saying? I'm waiting for one hand. We can wait here all day. There's the other hand. We'll give it a gunner. Okay, we only have four hands then. I'm waiting for one more hand. I see one, two, three. Where are the hands? Come on, guys. Just read, read the step. Okay, thank you, thank you. My first step. What am I using? It's this first step right here. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is bad. We only have three people that know how to do this. We'll give it a Cohen. What is that y-intercept, Cohen? Negative one in the x direction or y direction? X, y. In the y direction. So negative one. I graph my y-intercept. My y-intercept is zero, comma, negative one. Thank you, Cohen. I graphed zero, comma, negative one. There it is. My next step, I'm going to be using the slope. Ah, oh, what is the slope? Let's treat it as a fraction. Technically, we have a negative something. Let's treat this as a fraction. What is our slope? Something over something. Slope here is really what over what? Delta y. It's delta y over delta x, yes. Delta y over delta x. I'll give you the points for that. And then Fernando. Um, negative 1 over 1. Yep, there it is. This is equal to negative 1 over 1. And I'll talk about this in depth in a sec. Because this is super important. If you don't have a number in front of the x, always assume it's 1. So it's negative 1. But as a fraction, that means it's negative 1 over 1. This is something we should be doing over and over again. Let's write this on the notes on the side. Negative x, that means the slope is equal to negative 1 over 1. Well, let's try another one. What if I just had x? What is the slope if it's just x? m is equal to what fraction? Something over something. If I just have blank x, what is our slope? Only one person, two people know, three people know, four people know. Monse, one over one. There it is. What's up, Sergio? Or just one, yeah, but as a fraction, it's one over one. All right. So if my slope is negative one over one, where do I go from my y-intercept? Right this direction, Mr. Sindel. Up this direction, down this many units. Where do I go from here? It's the same people participating over and over again. From this position, I go this many, then this many. Jose. Um, down one. Down one, because my y coordinate was negative one. My y was negative one, so I go down one. Good. And then? Right one. X is positive one. I go positive one in the x direction, positive one in the x direction, and that is my new point. And then you can do that over and over again. Jose said go down one, right one. I can do the same thing. Down one, right one. Down one, right one. Down one, right one. I have a lot of points, so I know that I'm going to be more correct. Oh, we're running low on time. And <laughs> we go ahead and make a line that goes through these points. And don't forget our shout it out. Arrows. Arrows. <laughs> All right. Did I give? I did not give him. All right, finally, I graph my next equation. I'm going to make it green. My next equation. What is my first step? <laughs> Jose just did this. The same people over and over again. What's my first step? I use this to do what? I use this positive 2 to do what? Andres. You graph 2 on the x. 0, 2. 0, 2. Oh, 0, 2 is the y coordinate. So it's right there? Yeah. 
All right, so I graphed my y-intercept of 2. Thank you, Andres. Let's get through this fast because we are so low on time. I took forever on the notes. And then I use the slope. My slope is now 1 over 2. This is my delta x. This is my delta y. So where do I go from here? How many left, right, up, down? Tell me the correct number of units, Fernando. Um, one up and two right. Go okay, one up. Delta y is one. X is two. So right two, one two, and I get to my next point. And I can do that over and over and again. I can say up one, right two, up one, right two, and I can get more and more points. I can do the same thing over here and over here, and it goes forever and ever. Go ahead and make a line through those points. And don't forget your arrows. Fernando got his XP. I don't know the alphabet apparently because alphabetized. All right, quite raise hand. Last thing that you need to do for our notes aside from your summary is the solution, which is Cohen. Y1, which is the same thing as negative 2, comma 1. There it is. Thank you, Cohen. Negative 2, comma 1, that was the solution. In fact, can we always say circle where they intersect? Circle where they intersect. That is the solution. All right. That's all I have for the notes. Go ahead and write your summaries now.